All right, everybody, welcome back to the Get It Done podcast. I'm Joe Zanke, your host, co-founder, COO of On Demand Storage, who sponsors the podcast. And today I'm with the CEO and also co-founder of On Demand Storage, my longtime business partner, Barrett O'Neill. Barrett, what's going on? Yo, what's up? Thanks for having me on. I've been uh, typically in the office next door here and you do these podcasts. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, <laughs> we're not too far away and we have paper thin walls, so you probably yeah. hear every single episode firsthand. It's true. I get it before it uh, makes it on the internet. So, besides food. <laughs> well, dude, this is a good episode. I um, I'm surprised. Well, I'm not surprised it hasn't take. It's taken us this long to actually sit down and do something like this. But I think it's pretty cool when you know we can kind of look back and reflect on what we've built. I like to talk a lot about you know what other people have done and and their journeys. And you know, I've heard I've heard a lot of cool stories. But I feel like um, we have a pretty cool one ourselves that we don't really get to talk about. Um, that much because we're always have our head down trying to build this thing. But um, no, I figured we'd get into some stories. So, I mean, um, you know, Barrett and I, just for anybody out there listening, started on demand storage when we were juniors in college um, at BAPS and it used to be Simple Storage Inc. And um, yeah, why don't you tell us? Because you kind of came up with the idea. So if you want to take us down memory lane. Yeah. So I think, I think we originally came up with the idea, the, um, Red Sox were playing in game six of the world series and we obviously couldn't afford tickets to the game. So we were taking the train to go to tequila rain, uh, RIP, I think to tequila rain, but <laughs> we were sitting on the train and a guy behind us said, Hey, I just followed you here from Babson. And it was a guy who ended up being, um, Matt Coffin. If you're listening, Matt, he sold we'll um, for a, three, $400 million or something like that. And he uh, had told us how, when he was in college, like he, he came up with this idea to store some of the international students items. So we said, Hey, why reinvent the wheel? Um, let's just do that. And I think what I, I coded a little website, Joe ran around campus with flyers and what the next thing, you know, I think we got what 65, 75 students signed up that first year. We got, yeah, we got that many kids to, to trust us and, and take their stuff, but it worked out really well. And um, I think we had both made more money than we'd ever made by a, a million. Um, oh, no it was, we were like shocked by, you know, what we were able to do. So then, yeah, we did it again next year, but um, no, that first year was hilarious. Yeah. We, well, we actually remember we stored the stuff in my parents' basement. Um, <laughs> so, so for reference, each student has probably five or six items. So we had 70 students. So we had 350 ish items in my parents' basement, which was not big enough to hold 350 items. So I remember my mom was calling like every insurance company in the world, trying to figure out what type of coverage she could get. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there, there is that, that coverage exists. So, um, no, but we, it all went, it went smooth. It did go smoothly. And here we are today, you know, fast forward six years. Um, for where we came from and you know we're still doing student storage but it wasn't long ago that we were still running around baps and doing some flyers and stuff and and just trying to get our name out there and i think you know um it's just funny to think back like you know when we first got started how kind of even though we were we i, I felt like we knew a decent amount about business um how little we actually knew about trying to run one and get one off the ground and how much we've learned since that point yeah i think we knew the high level theories and stuff you learn in class about business, but there's just something different when there's actual um, stakes on the table. And I think that things happen really, really slowly. And then it seems like a lot happens at once. Uh, I actually don't think that's unique to necessarily us or business in general, but that's a, how I've interpreted the experience. We, it was really slow for about two and a half years, and then it got a little bit faster. And then the last maybe 18 months, specifically the last 12. I mean, it feels like it was just yesterday. We were here a year ago. Um, so it's going really fast, which I think means you're, you're busy and we're just trying to optimize. So, you know, it's, it's really been a whirlwind lately. Yeah. Well, figuring out where we fit into the world has been, a, you know, a struggle because we always knew we had a good idea. And I think that one thing someone smart told us at the very beginning was like, you guys, one thing you have to be careful of is that your idea could apply to anybody pretty much at any time um, when it comes to, you know, all sorts of different people look for storage. So we have the student thing, which we already knew about, but then, you know, residentially, you think, you know, how many people could potentially use that commercially, you think how many potential people could use that. 
but really kind of trying to figure out like where you want to fit into that world, which um, I think took us a while to just figure out, you know what I mean? It was us, me, you and our other partner, Rob, um, with a truck and some warehouse space and, um, and a couple phones and a couple laptops trying to figure out what we wanted to do. And over the last 18 months, I feel like we've just seen the, the direction we want to go in. And now, especially over the last 12, we started to capitalize on it, which has made it great, but it does take time to like actually carve out where you want to go. And then you learn more about business as you start to do it and realize like, Hey, this is an opportunity that I can act on today versus this is something that, you know, might take more overhead or, or might be something that's going to take me two years to get to the point where I want it to be. Yeah. I mean, it just, it's hard to re replace time um, when you're doing some of these things. It never happens as fast as we want it to. So that's where I get really excited looking to the future though, because our learning curve increases at an increasing rate, at least in my opinion. So where we are in, in four years, hopefully is exponential to where we are now. Cause I think where we are now is exponential to where we were four years ago. So yep. I'm hoping that the increase is greater than the last year. So that's a really exciting part. Um, when we talk to these people who have been in business 30 or 40 years, you yeah. know, then you realize you really, you really don't know that much because imagine what they know because they've had just 40 years of compounding knowledge and, and, and we're at four. So I know. it, I know. it That's humbles you really fast, market. which is great. Yeah, no, and, and we've always been, you know, I think we like to knock each other all the time on like, you know, our, our downfalls or, you know, I, I think we're, sometimes we get hard on each other, but one thing I would give us credit for is always being um, fast learners. And I think that, you know, Tracy, who obviously is one of our key employees over here, you know, she came on, she was number four and, and she's kind of always given us some credit that where, you know, we do make a lot of mistakes, but we try not to make them twice. That's the biggest thing. Just make, make them twice. So, <laughs> so if you could go back, you know, we, we took a trip down memory lane quickly, but um, you know, obviously day one of starting the business, you know, we had all these big hopes and dreams. We all quit, you know, real life, decently well-paying jobs for people who were just out of college to, to start this thing. And, um, and we really didn't know what we were doing. We didn't really know when we were going to see money again, but you know, if you could go back to day one, knowing kind of what you know now, um, you know, what would you tell yourself as you were preparing to take this journey into entrepreneurship? So I think what I would say to myself now, and definitely to anybody else who's thinking about doing this is I would wade more slowly in the sense I think there's a lot you can do while you're still employed at a nine to five, especially now um, with all the work from home. I don't think it's a secret that most jobs don't actually require 40 hours of legitimate working time. So now with more free time, I would, I would learn and maybe even try to get some revenue um, flowing into you before just taking the leap. I think it would make your life a lot easier. I remember being really, really stressed the first probably two years we were doing this just because, especially the seasonal nature of the business when we first started it, it you'd make money and then it was, I don't really know when we're going to make it again, or we got to pay this bill, or I thought I was going to get this check. So that would be my, my biggest advice to myself is I would start before quitting my job. I'm sure the managers um, and owners of businesses out there that have employees who may do this are probably not going to be happy with me for saying this, but that, that would be my biggest change that I would make if I were to do it again. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, firsthand the power of the internet and being able to start something for honestly, relatively no money um, and, and yeah. get it off the ground. And I've talked to a lot of cool people on here, you know, including the pin golf guys who, you know, the three of them still have jobs and they've been able to build a business on the side and, and really um, yeah, it's just a smart way to go about it. And then, you know, once it has enough traction um, you can leave, but you know, I guess we were looking at it like, when we first started, you know, we need to get a truck, we need to get space, we need to get all these things. So we had overhead, which a lot of businesses have. And, and I don't think we realized that we didn't need to start with as much as we did at that point. But um, yeah, no, I, I think that's really good advice. I think that um, you definitely don't need to dive in feet first. I also, you know, the, the devil advocate point of that would be, I feel like there's no bad time to start. So like, you know, definitely just get started on something. If you have the bug, I mean, the resources are available for you to get started. Um, and if you want to take the leap in, you know, do it cautiously, but I think your advice is, is great because you can do something and, and honestly make a really good secondary living, um, 
for while you're doing other things. It's just, it's just. Well, well, yeah. I mean, entrepreneurship doesn't have to be, you start this company that makes $500 million and you have a thousand employees. I mean, there's a lot of people that an extra 2000, 5,000, $10,000, $20,000 that they can make um, via the internet or via some skill that they have. You know, some people are really crafty with graphic design and they create graphic templates one time and then sell them on a place like Envato Market. And you can just make recurring revenue of something you did a long time ago. So there's all the, there's so many different businesses and models out there that I think it's almost overwhelming. But if you have a skill set, which I think everybody listening to this does, there is a way to monetize that via the internet. So I think if I were to go into entrepreneurship or even just looking for a side hustle, you know, as a lot of people call it, that's where I would start. Um, and yeah, I think that any, I think anybody can make money on the internet. So that would, would definitely be the place to start. Um, granted, I'm really excited about on-demand storage, where we're at now and what we're doing. But just thinking back on the early days, um, if you don't have a support system that can help take care of you or you know, live in mom and dad's house and get dinner and stuff, then there are other ways to do it more creatively than just, just diving in um, like a crazy person, which, which we did. <laughs> it was a crazy move. Um, yeah, crazy. Honestly, dove in pre even getting, you know, funding to start, which we didn't get, you know, a ton of, um, but no, at the end of the day, I mean, um, I would totally agree with you. I think we probably could have taken some more cautious steps. Um, you know, I'm glad the way it's worked out to this point. Uh, and I am also very excited as to where we're at, but um, even if anybody's listening out there, you know, who just isn't looking to become a full-time entrepreneur, like take advantage of some of the, the, the things that Barrett's talking about, because they are real. Um, you can learn almost anything just watching YouTube uh, or from Twitter or social media accounts. And, and you can get good at, at doing something that adds a lot of value to other people, especially on a B2B level. Yeah. And, and anyone that is interested in, and wants to learn more about that, that's the same, just, just shoot me a, a LinkedIn um, message or email Joe and he can put you in touch with me. I'm, I'm, I think it can make your life a lot better just by learning these small little things. And I think what Joe said is great. YouTube, uh, blogs, all of this stuff is available on the internet for free. The only thing you have to do is put in the work to learn it and then get started. Um, and then just let compounding take over from there. So it's like, if, if you can commit a willingness to not quit for six months with any of these things, I think someone, I think you, you'd be more likely than not that you would succeed. Um, which is not always what you hear when you look at the stats about businesses doing well, not doing well. I think we're in a different age. Um, and a lot of those stats are because there used to be high startup cost of barrier to entry. I don't believe that's the case for like most things digital now. Yeah, no, I would agree. And I've seen it firsthand and um, yeah, definitely feel free to reach out to either one of us because, you know, I'd be more than happy to have conversations like that and, and, and talk to people about getting stuff off the ground. Yeah. I love doing it. So definitely. So what do you think, you know, looking back on our journey, what do you think was the most difficult process that we had to try to create during this? I mean, I feel like creating processes is something that we've been really focusing on as of late, but at the beginning, you know, all three of us were doing the same stuff like every day. We didn't really know what our roles were. We didn't really know, you know, a job comes in. This is how it's done start to finish. You know, we were kind of just throwing shit at the wall and eventually that turned into I think some, some decently carved out processes to this point, but what would you say was a challenging one that we had to do that maybe we weren't expecting to have to do? Yeah. So I think two probably that stand out to me, one you just touched on, which was figuring out your roles um, because me, you and Rob were pretty similar. We, it took a while to figure out what we were good at and where our interests were. And we've since evolved that. So like, that was less of even making process and more of, I think it just happened naturally as we learned new things. But I think the hardest one um, has been about hiring because it's the first process where it really involves someone else uh, and someone else who's going to commit their time, energy, and passion to your idea and business. So making sure that that process is smooth, making sure that you're getting the right person, making sure you have the things uh, to allow them to succeed is, is really important in my mind. And I think we're not even close to where we need to be on that. I think we're really far from where we started when we hired Tracy. Um, and I think it's something that we'll keep investing in from a money and also just putting thought into it standpoint. Um, it's really important. 
And it, hiring is, um, you know, we went to what is considered widely the best entrepreneurial school um, in the entire world year over year. And uh, that's not a process that I thought I ever took a class on. You know what I mean? Is like hiring yeah. someone, getting them to, like you said, commit their time and their, and their faith in you is a big thing too, is that, you know, we, we were like, this person has to truly believe that this works and we have to make it work because now, you know, I always like when I, when we have employees, you know, I, I try to think about like, Hey, you know, it, it puts like a nice little bit of pressure on you to be like, Hey man, th this person believes in what we're doing, you know, as much as we do and they're here. Um, so, you know, it's up to us to kind of just try to make this work and set it up the right way. And it's, it's not an easy thing to, to figure out. Not at all. And there's also the people you're bringing on have opportunity costs of their own. You know, what potential career are they not pursuing to pursue one with you? So it, it's just a massive responsibility. And I think that making that process smooth and giving new hires, A, getting the right people, but B, then making it a smooth transition for them to be excited about it, it is, is really the most important process. Um, and taking a business, I think, from, from where we are now. To, to where we want to go, which is ultimately to be a nationwide brand. So, you know, you're going to need great people to do lifting that heavy. It just, it, it, you know, you can't do it on your own. So I think we'll be talking a lot and focused on that a lot in 2021 and, and probably beyond. Yeah, no, I would agree with you there. Um, that's a big piece of, you know, even just coming up with um, benefits packages, learning about payroll, uh, payroll taxes, learning about all those things that, you know, just kind of, it's not just, Hey, this person works here now. It's um, there's, there's a lot that goes into it. And, and I think we're still learning about it every day. Like you said. Yeah, we will be forever. So, you know, outside of our, um, we touched upon, you know, how business has changed and there's a kind of a new age when it comes to the internet. Um, we've talked about, you know, I've talked about on here quite a few times, you know, the future of on-demand storage, what we're trying to do. Um, but I guess at a high level, you know, what are your thoughts on the future of business in general? I mean, I think that, you know, obviously COVID was a big disruptor, but, you know, just even outside of that, where do you see, um, you know, the business shifting to, if you see anything kind of like at a high level that um, you could touch upon, because you're always pretty insightful about what's going on in the world. Yeah. So what I think is, I think to touch back on what we previously talked about, I think there's going to be a lot of what I'm calling digital first entrepreneurs, a lot of people who have these skills and are leveraging the power of um, Shopify, of just general um, other platforms that you can sell products and services on, just selling services, whether it's consulting, financial consulting, marketing consulting to, to businesses. I think there's going to be a huge spike in those types of things because people are going to realize they can make more money on their own from where they want in most cases um, and live a happier life. So, you know, and not only that, they'll get the benefits of being a business owner, like being able to, as your income rises, put more money away for retirement and get tax deductions. Or there's all these things, you know, buy a vehicle through your company. There's all these things that business owners get the benefit of. And now that the, the barrier to entry of starting a business is lower, and not only that, a business that pays you well um, is really interesting. If you wanted to sell t-shirts 20 years ago, you had to rent a piece of real estate in a good place. You had to hire people. You had to buy systems. You had to purchase all these different insurances. Now you can just set up in your spare bedroom and connect to Shopify and you could be selling them worldwide. So it's, it's incredible to see what the power of the internet and the scale of the internet can do for the average person. And I think the internet is in like the second inning um, on that stuff. It's all new, right? Like this stuff wasn't even really widely available in, in 2010. I mean, there's 22, 23 year old kids making a million dollars a month through affiliate sites, through selling apparel, through all these different things. And it, it's almost overwhelming what you can do, but I think you're going to see a lot of people realize they have more talent compared to others than maybe they would think and that they really can do this stuff and they really can make outrageous amounts of money in less time by focusing their time and energy on a, on a scalability. And then I think the second piece is I think we're going to move to a more media first world. I think it's going to be more important to have 
50,000 Twitter followers than it is an MBA from Harvard. Um, because of all these platforms, things like Substack, it's like you can basically, you can print money on demand, you can build a, a, a following um, through these platforms that will follow you anywhere. And that's really powerful. Um, and it's hard to compete with that when you're at a, at a corporate job. So I really think I'm seeing a lot of people that I think are really intelligent, people that I look up to, and they've recently, especially since COVID, really focused on building out their audience because I think they see that. And these are not, these are highly educated people like Stanford private equity investors, guys we've competed against in business. So I think these, these types of people focusing on that is an indication to me that having your own media platform is going to be really important. I think that could be Twitter, LinkedIn, all these, all these different things. Um, but they're real businesses, not social media, if you use it that way. I agree with you. Well, you think about the, you know, the scale that you could sell something at if, you know, you had a hundred thousand Twitter followers and, and people who listen to what you say. I mean, there's a reason why you get to a hundred thousand Twitter followers, especially if you're only talking about, you know, something like business, because people believe in what you're saying. People look for that next tweet. People are, um, you know, you have, you have a following. And it, honestly, I feel like if you were to, you know, rent a, a stage somewhere where a bunch of people could go outside of COVID, and, and say, hey, I'm going to be speaking here, you know, a lot of those people would show up because they actually believe in what you're saying. So 100%. think about the power that, that, that comes with that. I mean, if you wanted to launch a product from just having something like that, um, you'd have 100,000 potential probable buyers on like day Yeah, one. well, now it's a, it's a build an audience first and then sell. It used to be you had to sell to build an audience. Yep. Um, so that's just a really different way of looking about it. And I've always hated social media. Um, Me too. I always think I, I really haven't liked it. So for me, it's really challenging, but I'm committing to myself and putting it out publicly here. So now I have to do it um, is <laughs> like to, to build a following. I probably use Twitter as my, my media, my platform, but I'm going to focus there because I do believe to kind of go back to your question originally. I do believe that those are real businesses with incredible lifetime asset value. That's hard to even quantify right now. Who knows what it will be, you know, in a period of time. Um, from now. So, you know, no, it's amazing. Take it seriously. It's amazing. I mean, it's almost like you can become famous without doing like, you know, you think about like, even if someone like Bill Murray, who obviously is extremely famous, but was way, but it's extremely famous for 40 years. Right. And yeah, he could disappear. He could not even have a Twitter, but he could come out with a new line of product that he backs and like tons of people would buy it because he had an audience that he built in 1975. You know what I mean? Right. And, and that audience carries with him today because a lot of his stuff, the powerful thing about social media, YouTube, those like videos, posts, they never die unless you want them to. So they're always there. You can go back and watch videos from, you know, 2005. And so people can always access your stuff. And so if you build that audience, man, think about how it's not going to disappear. People aren't going to unfollow you. Like they really, they, unless you start saying controversial stuff, but if you just build an audience and even, you know, disappear for a couple months, that audience is still going to be there when you come back. And, and you can do, you know, so much with it. I mean, it's so powerful. So I, yeah. uh, I agree with you too. I've never been a big social media guy. I never really knew how to use it the right way and, or never really wanted to learn. But the more I see people like the ones that you're talking about getting into it uh, for the reasons that we're talking about, the more I just see, you know, so much value in, in, in being yeah. an influential person. And they call especially, it influencers, but. Especially if you're building like we are. Um, you can almost just kind of document what you're doing and learning. And I think there's a ton of, right. There's so many people that are so far beyond us, but then there's so many people that haven't started yet. So imagine if you can cut somebody's learning curve, the value to them, or if the value to us, if, if we can connect with someone who, um, you know, is an, is an investor or is um, someone who has advanced industry knowledge that would take us years to get in contact with this person or get important enough to talk to them. Uh oh, my light went out. <laughs> Sorry about that. Ah, still, they're being very still. Um, but yeah, you know, so I think overall, though, just the, the power of the audience is real. So I think if, you know, starting out, if you're going to build a business, you might as well build that too in tandem. Um, we're a little bit behind, but it's something that, like I said, publicly I'm committing to. So anyone here can, can call me out if I don't do it. Yeah. Well, we can play catch up. I mean, we know, we know enough now. Um, if we wanted to start talking about business in 2016, it would be like trips to Staples together. So we, uh, 
we've come a long way. We actually know what we're talking about now. And, and I think yeah. we have some, some insightful value that hopefully we can use to build our followings. Um, but yeah, no, I'm committing to doing it too. I think um, I actually, my Twitter profile used to be a picture of me with like upside down sunglasses and a, like a beanie on. And I haven't been on it in a while, um, but I recently uploaded that to a more professional picture uh, as a testament to myself to commit. So I, <laughs> I gotta do we it. As keep, well. We'll hold each other accountable. We have to. So the last question I like to ask everybody is, you know, and I think you and I would probably have some similar answers on this because we have used a lot of these tools that we've learned. But um, what's a book recommendation you would recommend someone, you know, pick up, you know, over the in their spare time, even if it's a fiction, nonfiction? Um, I think we'd have probably some similar answers, but I'd like to hear from you. Yeah, I would say Profit First by Mike Michalowicz, um, which is, a, which is a, a book that if you're a small business owner, as you're reading it, you may even feel like it's it's written at you. Um, I remember, I genuinely felt like when it was saying you that it was just my name, like the, in, in the text, it was so spot on. And the gist of it is flipping accounting, traditional accounting on its head. And it, it, it's not revenue minus expenses equals profit. It's revenue minus profit equals expenses. And so it's just all about putting the profit in the first part of the equation, um, which for us personally has skyrocketed um, owners discretionary earning margins um, called EBITDA and bigger companies, but has made our life just a lot better. So I can't recommend that book enough. Mike McCallowitz also has the Pumpkin Plan, which is another great one, and Run Like Clockwork, which is building systems. So we should actually circle back on Run Like Clockwork and maybe reread that one as it's a little more relevant to us now. But that guy's books are awesome. And I know the help anybody running a small business that I can say with confidence. I can attest to those as well. I remember the day that we all picked it up. And um, yeah, you, you and, recommended it to me, actually. Yeah. So shout out to Jason Dornhofer, who was a guest on this podcast. Right. Um, right. United Private Car. I went and visited them. And they told me about that book and they told me what it was describing. So I was like, all right, I got to give this a shot. And then I started reading it and I read probably a hundred pages. And I was like, I think I sent you guys like a, a PDF copy. I was like, you have to read yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then you bought it, you read the whole thing, but we all read it. And it, it really, like, honestly, it turned around our company in a lot of ways. No uh, but it's like, it's the perfect book to read when you're going to start something. You know what I mean? It's the perfect yeah. book. And that, and that throw the pumpkin plan right on top too. That that that's a good one. So Mike McCallowitz, you should try to get him as a guest. He would be awesome. Um, he's awesome. The, yeah. the king, the king of small business. So um, yeah. But no, you've been a tremendous guest. Um, I am excited about what we have planned. I'm excited about um, you know what we're learning every day. I think that's even as exciting. Um, you know, I was talking to Bennett recently, and we were talking about how a oh, little connection issue. Yeah, I think I have you back now. All right. No, I was saying I was talking to Bennett recently and we were talking about um, just like how every day has, um, you know, we've seen progress, but, you know, I'm actually feeling like in, in all honesty, and it's exciting to get to this point that like the next day, like tomorrow is going to be the best day that we've had at ODS. And then I really think that Friday is going to be the best day that we've had ODS for so many different reasons. I mean, we have a lot of people around now on the team that are learning new things every day, that are making new discoveries, that are talking to new people, that are making new sales. And we're at a point where I feel like each day is just going to get a little bit better. And we're at that 1% pace where, you know, you're going to look back and like we talked about at the beginning, we look back four years and we're like, holy sh you know, where the hell, what were we doing? And I feel like we're going to look back in two years now and be like, remember when we were doing that, you know, two years ago? And it's like, now we're in a yeah. whole different strategy. I'm hoping at least, but um, that's the type of atmosphere I feel like we're trying to create. And, um, and I'm excited to take the journey. Yeah, I think that's the trend for sure. So um, I agree. Get, getting better every day. That, that's the key. So I'm, I'm really excited about 2021 and what we have cooking. It's, it, it's good stuff. And for everybody just follow, follow us and, and watch us. I think it'll be, you know, at, at best you'll learn what to do. And at, at worst, you may learn not what and learn what not to do. So, so either follow way, you should on, learn. Follow us on Twitter on. so that you put some pressure yeah. on. Right. There's a, a nice plug. <laughs> um. 
Uh, all right, dude. Well, this has been fun. We'll um, maybe we'll do another one soon and, and keep people updated. Yeah, that sounds good. Thanks for having me on, Joe. All right, man. I'll talk to you.